Hi, I'm a business lawyer. I travel around through Asia, and sometimes here and there, I will teach English. Thing is, I want to discuss with you a couple of problems that I'm having. I do not know how to deal with it, so I'm going to share it with you, and maybe you can tell me some feedback. If you're a teacher around here and you have the same problem, feel free to share with me because I'm curious how you solve it. So let's begin. Um, in this video, I want to talk about the problems that I'm having. I want to give you a couple of examples that I'm having. So, if you're an English teacher in Southeast Asia or around the world, and uh, you're also having the same problem, feel free to share with me because I want to see how you handle it. Because for me, it's important how to help the students. It's that simple. And sometimes I know how to help them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes my method is working, sometimes it doesn't. So, that's simple. Okay. Let's start with the first uh, problem. The thing is, when the students are learning English, so when I'm teaching English, they all want to learn fast English. And sometimes they do their best, or sometimes they um, don't do their best. But most of the time, the people are motivated because the people I'm teaching are motivated to learn English. But the problem that they're having is something that I still don't understand, is they have lack of knowledge. I'm going to explain to you by example and hopefully you understand me. If I have a chair and I know that it's a chair, then I know that it's a chair. But if I have a chair, I know that it's a chair but I do not know how to use it, that's a different story. And the problem that I'm having is a lot of people are saying you need to know a lot of words in order to speak English. But why is that? I want to explain to you. If I know a lot of words in English, but if I cannot communicate, that's a different story. And what I most of the time tell them is, listen, what you need to do is not to learn what a word is, try to learn how to use a word. And sometimes they do that, and sometimes they get more confident when they practice using a word. So making sentence, making example, give an example with a word. That's how I teach it. But the problem I'm having is the rumors that if you know a lot of words, you can speak English. But I met a lot of students that knows a lot of words, but they use the word to impress. Then I'm thinking about myself, hey, listen, are you trying to communicate? Are you trying to explain something to me? Also, are you trying to impress me by saying, hey, I know a lot of words? This is something that I find it sometimes hard to do with it because you don't want to... Um, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to be hard on the students, but on the side, sometimes you need to be hard on the students to make sure that they know what they are doing. So that's a problem that I'm having. Another problem that I'm having is uh, sometimes they have lack of knowledge. I do not blame them, but if you, are, if you study at a university and you have a lack of knowledge, then I think something is wrong. Let me explain to you. For example, um, a lot of students know a lot of things, but they do not have the skills to look things up if they do not know it. For example, when I was studying, one of the main basic things was for us to do, if you do not know something, you need to look it up. It's that simple. And here, they always expect me to give them answer. And I'll be like, no, I'm not doing that. You have to do it yourself. It's that simple. And sometimes it's hard for them. They're going to be like, hey, you're the teacher. You need to, uh, you need to give me the um, answer. I'm going to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm curious how you do it as a teacher, but for me, I'm just doing it so they need to build up the skills to look things up for themselves, because when I'm not around, they need to do it themselves. And that's what I'm trying to learn there. So that's a problem that I have, and because of that, if you do not look for things up, if you do not look things up, you don't get more knowledge, you don't become independent. And that's why I don't give a lot of answer when I'm teaching. That's my method, I'm curious how you do it, so feel free to share it with me. Another problem I'm having is um, a lot of students have a lot of potential, but it's sad to see that they do not have the means to get there. Sometimes it's sad, but sometimes you see that they are really creative and doing things. It's so fun sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to give an example, but sometimes it's so fun when you see them. They don't have the means, but they think of something and to get the same result without this means. And that's nice to see. But I'm worried about the students that have potential, but they do not have the means. 
because I saw a couple of students leaving and they had the potential to get bigger, to speak English, to get uh, to do what they want. But I think life's going to be hard on them because they are not, way too nice. I'm not saying you have to be not nice, but I'm saying that sometimes you have potential and life can hate you really hard and that can destroy. So um, that's a problem I'm having because sometimes it's sad to see it. And for me, it's sad to see it and I do not know how to deal with it yet. Another problem, problem I'm having is um, when, I'm studying, when I studied at university, I studied law. The, the teacher always say, don't trust anyone. That's why I have trust issue. But the teachers always say, don't trust anyone. Always verify your source. I'm going to give you an example. If they look for news, they only look news on one channel. This is not a problem only here in Asia with the students, but also a lot of people. They only look for news on one channel. The problem is they do not validate or confirm what the people are saying. Sometimes it's hard, but I always learn that you need to confirm if you get something. And the students find it hard to do that. And sometimes they're gonna be like, so you think I'm lying? I will be like, yeah, I think you're the lie. Hey. And sometimes it's get personal. And sometimes it's funny, sometimes it isn't. Because some people are gonna be like, hey, you don't trust me when I say something. And it is funny for me to see, but it's my way of working. And yeah, they will trust a source, but for me, is a source is a source. Just make sure you have two or more. Uh, I'm curious how you, if you have the same problem and uh, how you deal with it. The thing is, when I'm teaching around, I'm not going to teach the same as the English teacher. Here. I'm trying to understand the student, so I'm not going to learn them communication. I'm going to learn them how they can understand people in order to make a good communication. That's how I see things because as soon as you start to understand people, you also understand what they want and how they're going. That's how I do business because when I do business, if I understand the business, then it's easy for me to make sure that I know what the business mean, need. So um, that's how I see it. If you're a teacher around here in Asia, feel free to contact me. I'm curious how you see it and how she, what you really do at your school. So feel free to share it and uh, we will see it. This is the video if you have question about yeah this is the video if you have question about this video or anything related to teaching feel free to contact me in the future I will make a lot of videos like this but I'll also show you what kind of experiments I'm doing with the students in order to see what works for them and what doesn't if you have question about those experiments that I'm planning feel free to contact me see you in the next video.